The 10 most annoying mounts to farm? Really? Warning, this video okay. is very annoying. That is, if you want to farm Captain Grimm made a video. I'll look at that afterwards. About. As in this video, we'll go over 10 of the most annoying mounts to possibly farm in WoW. And at number 10, we have the ultimate Karaji. Yeah, I, I got this super this early. This is a mount obtained from archaeology. So, so all easy you have to, to do so is easy just to get. farm a whole bunch of archaeology mm -hmm. for Tolvir archaeology mm -hmm. fragments. And you'll get this mount eventually. But here's a little catch. You don't get to specifically farm Tolvir fragments. No, Those you don't. Those dig sites just pop up randomly on the map sometimes when you're doing archaeology in Kalimdor. So, uh, I'll give you guys a tip for this mount. If you want to farm out this mount, here's the tip. It's actually better for you to farm archaeology in either the Broken Isles or in uh fucking in the Broken uh, not Broken in like uh the new zones uh fucking Kultiris and Zandalar. It's better to farm artifacts in Kultiris and Zandalar and then buy Tolvir boxes and open the Tolvir boxes for fragments than to actually farm directly for the Tolvir fragments. It's so stupid. So, most of the time, there won't even be dig sites in Oldham, which yep. is the only zone that will drop your Tolvir artifacts. Yep. So, what you can do is just complete all of the dig sites so that they'll eventually reroll to mm -hmm. a new zone, and then eventually they'll show up in Oldham. It's really and fun to do that. And then once you do get your artifacts, you just randomly complete whatever is your current research project, which is assigned to you randomly each time you complete a research project. It's very fun. Until eventually, you'll roll on the one that allows you to create the ultimate Karanji mm -hmm. battle tank. Which can take quite a while. Yeah, it did. There are ways it to speed ridiculous. this up, however. It's fucking insane. If you don't insane. want to randomly farm for Tolvir fragments, which I wouldn't recommend because it takes forever, yep. you can just simply do archaeology in Mista Pandaria or above zones. This guy is really smart. Let me tell you guys. This is a really smart guy. Um, There's kinds of people that, that think like this, really think outside of the box, and they have like this level of uh, intelligence that few people are able to comprehend so i'm really glad that this guy is here making videos like this because it's really important that he's sharing his extensive knowledge and understanding of the game such in a order to guy. get things called restored artifacts yep but you can turn into a vendor which will allow you to buy a yep. box full of a couple of tolvir fragments yep. so that you can complete your tolvir research projects without having to go out and randomly find dig sites in Uldum. Now, how you get restored artifacts is by completing research projects in new zones, mm -hmm. so Miss, Warlord of the Draenor, Legion, and BFA, in which case sometimes you'll randomly get an item that you can convert into a restored artifact. So overall, it's actually faster to just farm out restored artifacts yeah. than it is trying to farm Tolvir fragments directly. Exactly. But both of these are exactly. very time consuming and makes it so you have to do a lot of archaeology. This is And there are some reports from people I feel like this one should be higher. Like if this is number ten, like I don't know what the fuck number nine to one is gonna be, man. Like this mount was a big fucking cock. People who actually managed to obtain this mount, that it takes about hundred and twenty five completions Jesus, before the mount dude. project shows up. Although, it it's could awful. show up in one of your first 10 completions, too. Yeah. It's random, so it could take you forever, or it could be a very simple and fast process. Yeah, he's a mad boy. But man. it is one of the most annoying mm -hmm. mounts to farm. Shorty, thanks for five subs, man. Because it requires you to do Appreciate a it. lot of archaeology. Which is why only 8% of the player base actually owns this mount. As a comparison, 10% of players own the Brine Deep Bottom Feeder mount. Wait, you're saying 10, 8% of the player base has this? I don't believe that, man. Like, that's such a massive amount. 10% of the player base? No fucking way. Which requires you to do a crap no ton of fishing way. in one specific pool in the Broken Isles, Dalaran. People are more willing to fish mm -hmm. than they are to do archaeology. People are which willing should to tell do anything you something about how annoying archaeology is. Especially since people have been able to obtain the ultimate Karaji mm -hmm. battle tank for a lot longer than they could the bottom feeder mount. Mm -hmm. And at number 9, we have the Ashhide Mushan Beast. This mount is obtained in the Timeless Isle from ah! a vendor for 500 bloody coins. And it's obtaining these coins that makes this mount so hard to farm out. That's actually true, man. I got this shit back in Mr. Pandaria. It was a joke. Because you would just go and kill people that were undergeared. But now you have to do it in BGs. As there's two ways to gain bloody coins. Yep. One of them is to use the item Sensor mm -hmm. of the Eternal Agony, the good which days. lowers your health by 90% when you use it. Yep. And then it allows you to kill Horde and Alliance players, oh no matter your God, faction. Man. Just as I long used as to love doing style, this. 
and each kill of an enemy player will award you one coin. This was so, so fun, ideally, man. you just use this item and then kill 500 players of the Timeless Isle and you have yep. your mount, which was probably possible back in Mist of Pandaria. You can still do it, but what you need to do is you need to get phased over to a very, very high population or like multi-connected server and just kill people that are AFK waiting to w waiting for Hulan to spawn because that's where all of the all of the players are at is they're just waiting for Hulan. So if you guys want to farm them, that's the tip. When Timeless Isle was current content, but it's much more difficult in every expansion afterwards mm -hmm. where there's rarely people on the Timeless Isle. Well, outside of Mista Pandaria Time Walking Week, since the Time Walking yeah. Vendor is located on the Timeless Isle. Which makes it a lot Although, easier. even then, you have to be in war mode in order to kill enemy players, even if you have the availability of killing both factions. Mm -hmm. And the other way to obtain bloody coins, which is the much easier way, is with the item, the Fire Watcher's Oath. This item yeah. will allow you to obtain bloody coins in PvP activities outside of the Timeless Isle. It's not 100% though. Although it used to be at a much lower drop rate yep. of only having a 10% chance per kill to get one coin. As you do have to get the killing blow in order to obtain a bloody coin. So having to farm really battlegrounds and get annoying. killing blows where only 1 in 10 would actually give you a bloody coin took a very long time. Yes Or it did. at least around 5,000 killing blows. Jesus. You'll probably passively obtain it as long as you just remember to keep the item up oh over the course God. of a couple of months. Yeah, you've got a PvP a lot for that shit. that was the case shit. until Legion, when Blizzard hotfixed the item to give it a 100% chance to give you Wait, really? coins on kills. But you still need to land the killing blow. That's it, easy, you just get reaping flames, what the fuck? The item itself has a 10 minute cooldown, That's so a if joke. you die early before it comes up, you won't actually have it 100% of the time while you're in Battlegrounds. Mm -hmm. I have heard reports of people just getting two groups together of opposite factions on the Timeless Isle and just taking turns killing each other in order to get bloody coins fast. Cheating Andes. I don't know if this actually works or not, but it sounds like something that would probably work. Yeah. Either way, uh, only that, about 7% of players actually own this mount. And yeah, it's, it's slightly pretty more annoying, annoying to, to now, obtain than doing archaeology. I actually had to learn how to do archaeology uh, in order to like that segment on the number 10 spot. Because Honestly, dude, like I think the Mushan is so much easier to get than the archaeology one. The Mushan, like you just PvP. Like you just PvP. That's it. Like you go into a BG, you PvP, you get it, it's done. That's all there is to it. Like that's it. Am I a cheating Andy if I farm botters at Halls of Lightning? No, no, I'm joking. Like if you want to do that kind of stuff, like if players I don't really care about people that are like coordinating with each other to like fake achievements. Like the only thing I really care about are like prestige based things like arena, like, you know, win trading for arena. But like people that win trade for like pet battle wins or something stupid like that, who cares? I wasn't sure how the restored artifact system even worked, mm -hmm. despite the fact that I've been playing the game for over 10 years. Yeah, I will course. also mention there is a little bit of a more sketchy way to obtain bloody coins faster which killing involves bots. repeatedly killing a friend's trial character over and over while they respawn instantly at a spirit healer. But I'm not sure that's something Blizzard really wants you to do, and I'd rather not advise hey, you to do things is that now. would get your account banned. I'm there also not is. sure if that method even still works. So, on to the next spot on this list. It doesn't work because you still get the debuff, I'm pretty sure. And I don't think the debuff gets cleared whenever you die. So, uh, you can only do it every 10, uh, every like fucking 10 minutes. It works. I thought the debuff, doesn't the debuff go away? Wrong, it still does work. If you stand at max distance, it's not applied. You have to be at max range. <laughs> okay, all right. And at number eight, we have the Phosphorescent Stone. Yeah, right! This is the mount that drops from a rare mob in Deep Home named Aonax. Yeah, which has right! Which has a 100% drop rate and will drop for everyone in your party. Are you kidding me? So what some me? people will do is post on their Discord server that they found this rare mob in order to invite four other people so that what? everyone can obtain the Stone Drake. And even with this gracious way of obtaining the mount, only about 4% I... of players have it. Because you see, finding this rare mob is the hard part. It's not, though. This is not hard at all. Like, are you kidding me? It's super easy. Do you guys want to know how to get it? Do you guys want to know how to get it? Here's how you get it. You make a character on a low pop server, and you just go over there, and you wait on the low pop server, and you just get it there. It's super fucking easy. Like, I, I don't even know what to say. 
The mob has a two Whatever. to eight hour respawn timer in Deep Home. What? Spawns in multiple locations and shares a respawn timer with a random rare bat. Now, a respawn mm -hmm. timer of about five hours on average means yep. you have to spend a day camping this thing out if you want a chance to obtain it. That's it? That's it? It's a, a day? It's not, I don't think this one's annoying to farm at all. Like, no, I, I don't think it's annoying to farm. Like, a day, oh, wow. I have to spend a whole day playing, oh my God. Oh, I've got to take a piss, guys. I'll be right back. Sorry, just give me a second. This is so dumb. Which is an incredibly long time to fly around the zone looking for one rare mob. But if that's all, all it right. took, then they would have a much higher collection rate. Since mm -hmm. WoW players on a whole are perfectly fine with camping something out for long periods of time, in order to get something cool. Yeah, it's like not a big deal. What makes this mount difficult to obtain is the fact that it shares that respawn timer with a bat. Because if the bat respawns, then you have to wait another two hours yeah. after killing it before the stone drake has a chance to spawn again, as it has that minimum two hour respawn timer. So what some people will do in farming this mount is just take two hours break after they kill the bat because there's no way the drake can spawn any earlier than that's that. That's a good idea. It's really this shared respawn timer yeah, with another smart. mob, and the fact that it has a long spawn timer that's very makes smart. it so you could camp out this mount all day and never actually find it. Or some that, That's how time lost proto drake is too, actually. When else will randomly come across it and take with it without Viragosa. knowing, and then you won't know how long you have to wait for another respawn timer. This yep. mount is awarded to people who have lots of free time on their hands, or can afford to fly around the game for eight hours at a time mm -hmm. looking for one dragon to kill for a mount, which is why it's an annoying mount to farm. And at number seven, we have the Boy Talon of the Dark Star. This mount is- I got lucky with this one. Somebody in my, uh, uh, on my stream, or I don't think it was my stream, I, it was somebody like that found out about me. It was on like YouTube or something like that. They invited me to a group and I, I got this uh, really fucking easy from that. Uh, yeah, I got lucky for that. Obtained simply by clicking on an edge of reality portal, yeah, I which never will got port you into your own little instance that will allow you to click on an egg, which gives you a mount 100% of the time. Yep. And this one is hard to obtain in the same way that the phosphorescent stone drake is. As long as you can find the portal, you'll get the mount. Yeah. But finding the portal is the hard They're part. They're supposed to spawn like you see, after these the, portals uh, spawn once every timer. 13 to 48 hours, which is a much longer spawn timer than the two or to eight the hours reset, from I mean. the previous spot on this list. And the portals can spawn at almost random locations across Draenor from the mm -hmm. Warlords of Draenor world map. And I say almost random locations because there technically is set locations for all the portals. It's just there's a lot of them and they're spread all throughout Draenor. And when a portal spawns, it only lasts for... I fucking did this for like six months before I got it. Five minutes. This one was really annoying. if no really one clicks annoying. the portal in five minutes, it will despawn it so and then respawn somewhere else at random in about another hour. And it will it keep doing this cock, until man. someone clicks on it in which case it will enter its 13 to 48 hour cooldown. The thing is though, there's no real way to track if someone else has already clicked on one of these portals. Right. So someone could have clicked on the portal yesterday and you could be looking all around Draenor for it to not be able to spawn. That's why you do it after stay, the server reset. As people can just randomly find these portals while questing yep. through these zones. And since finding one of these portals is so difficult, the Void Talon has only been collected by 3.4% of the player base, which Jeez. is an incredibly low number and only slightly lower than the previous spot on this list. God damn. And at number six, we have the Reigns of the Grey Riding Camel. In order to get this mount, all you have to do is kill an NPC called Dormus, the oh, they camel fixed border, it? Oh, who shit. has a 100% okay. chance to drop it. And just like the previous two spots, finding mm -hmm. this NPC is the difficult part. You see, the only way to find this NPC is to be teleported to his location by finding a camel figurine. And so there used to be an exploit with this one where what you could do is you would kill the guy, the NPC, and it would only be visible to you. So you would kill the NPC, the Dormus, the Camel Hoarder, and you would then drop group and get phased over to another server and then kill the NPC on that server and then drop group again, get phased over, and then kill the NPC on another server and then trade all of the mounts to your friends. And the camel figurine is at one of 50 spawn yep. locations around Uldum. That and the figurine good, will spawn in one of those 50 locations once every four hours or so. So it has a two to eight hour respawn timer. And once you find the camel figurine, there is only a 5% chance that it will actually be the correct one. 
The other 95% of the time, the figurine will just turn into a trash item, and then you start the 2-8 to eight hour respawn timer again. And just like with the Edge of Reality Portals, you won't actually know someone else has clicked on the camel figurine in the past 2-8 to eight hours, so you could spend all day looking for one only for someone else to have clicked on it randomly earlier on. Yep. And this is the nerfed version of this farm. It used to have a 4-12 to 12 hour respawn timer. So here's some tips to farming this mount thanks to some of the people are in the wowhead comments. Work with other people. You can only obtain the camel yeah. figurines in the Cataclysm version of the zone. This is so stupid, So make so sure you swap stupid, that man. over if you have the BFA version. Sci-Fi with the 10 subs, character. thank you very much, man. Then just fly thank around you, to all you. of its 50 spawn locations and then swap over to much, war sir. mode as that counts as a separate server mm -hmm. and then check again. And then you can use trial characters on different servers to do the same method. Yeah, that's what you, you need to do, get is you use looking. trial characters. Because that's even doing secret. this, and potentially looking on 50 different servers per day, there is no guarantee that you'll actually get it after checking 100 mm -hmm. times. Because of that darn little 95% chance that it will turn into trash. Which is why this little mount only has a 3.4% collection rate. Which yeah. is the same as the Void Talon, despite the fact that the Void Talon mount came out two expansions later. And at number five, this one's so fucking annoying to get. Five, we have the chewed on reins of the terrified pack mule. Wait, what? This mount is randomly obtained from world what? mobs that have hex thralled in their name from the what? zone of Drustfar in BFA. Now, BFA added a couple of other world drop mounts, and they all have is... much higher collection rates than the terrified pack mule. Who you just buy it? Basically, the wait, don't you just buy this one? I thought you just buy it, like exact same way as all what? the others just killing a whole bunch of specific mobs in a zone. Yeah. Now, according to the people who've undergone the mob grind in order to obtain this mount, the reason this one is so much harder to obtain yeah. than all the other BFA world mounts is because the mobs you have to farm are more spread out. So there's no super yeah, farm spot like all the others have, and the mobs take longer to spawn. Mm -hmm. You see, for the BFA world mount Captured Dune Scavenger, for example, okay. There is a hyper spawn location at this one little location on the map, yep. which is also sometimes a world quest. It's I see plenty of people doing that. Like, there's always like a fucking, there's like a, this like monk with the statue down and like five people AoEing on there. And they're just pumping out these, these hyenas every five seconds. And that's why they're like 10, 10 gold on the auction house. Uh, most annoying mounts to farm. You can buy it, yes, but the video title says most annoying mounts to farm. Well, yeah, but if you can farm it with gold, though, that makes it less annoying, doesn't it? I, I mean, like, because the thing is with, like, the Karaji battle tank or something like that, you can't farm this with gold. Well, wait, yeah, you can. I I'm either getting five heads or question marks. What the fuck, guys? Like, what I'm saying is that the other mounts don't have a gold alternative. You just have to do it on your own. And, and that's the difference, man. I'm going to see how much this is worth. You can basically just put a group of four people together and constantly yeah. kill mobs all day until you get the drop. Since the mobs will spawn so quickly. Mm -hmm. And all the other mounts have a similar place. Even if it's not as great as this one particular mount. Except for the terrified pack mule. That one requires hunting down the mobs associated to it, and all of these mounts take about 5,000 kills on average before you get a drop. Luckily though, Jesus. you can just buy this mount off the auction house if someone Holy else is it, which is not the case for almost all the other mounts on this list. God but damn. even with the availability of buying this mount off the auction house, it still is by far the least collected of all of the BFA world drop That's mounts, really surprising. clocking in at only a 1.8% of people owning it. Wow. The mount is either rarely on the auction house, costs too much for the people when it is there, or is just too much of an annoying grind to actually obtain. I don't think anybody farms these unless they're going for gold. You know what I mean? Like, I'm on 27k kills without a drop. Yeah, I, like, in my opinion, like, I think, like, most people probably get it unless they're, like, gold farming specifically for that. I, I, I don't know, like, like, I've had this mount for so long, it didn't even, I didn't even think of this one. Although since this is one of the newest mounts on this list, that also contributes to why it has such a low collection rate. Now, if you yeah. do plan on farming the BFA world mounts, make sure you do it in groups of four, because if you fill up your party with a group of five, then other people in the area won't be able to tag the same mobs. And at number four, we have the Mighty Caravan Brutosaur. This mount can be bought- You just get five, just get five million gold! You just get 5 million gold. That's it. Like, this is easy. Like, what do you mean? 
Like, I, I'm so confused, guys. Like, you, you just get 5 million gold. What a joke. Simply from this a vendor with easy. gold. And is probably super the easy. easiest mount to obtain on this list. Yeah. However, this mount makes this list at such a high spot because of how much gold it costs. Since the vendor doesn't allow any reputation bonuses, this mount will cost you 5 million gold to purchase. Yep, 5 million or in flat. terms of WoW tokens, based on US server prices when I made this video, yep. it can be thought to be worth over $500. Now, farming out 5 million gold is basically impossible for the average casual WoW player, and definitely requires you to intentionally go out and farm gold, no, as there's you just no way to passively quest, make That's 5 all. million gold in expansion. Especially since the mount will be going away once the next expansion, Shadowlands, comes out. And it will it's not going away. will be moved to the Black Market Auction House, where I can guarantee you that it will go for gold cap every time it shows up. No, it won't. No, it won't. Like, it, it, that will, will not. Like, why will it go for gold cap? Okay. Oh, man. Here's why it won't go for gold cap. Because every server has a different size economy. And with the different sizes of the economy, that brings in a different amount of gold that things are worth inside of that respective economy. Because of that, you will probably see certain types of servers like Illidan or Stormrage that will have the long boy go for gold cap. But the thing is that you also have most of the people that are the big spenders that are going to spend gold cap on the mount probably would have already spent 5 million gold on it in BFA. So many of the people that have a large amount of funds have already purchased this mount to begin with. So I don't think that there's going to be a large amount of people who are going to hold off on buying this mount until after BFA is over in order to pay a premium for more than it was originally worth. On top of that, you can look at the way and the prices that world boss mounts sell on different servers. Some servers, world boss mounts sell for 6 million gold. Other servers, they sell for 600,000 gold. And you can also look at something like the Plagued Proto Drake or like the original ZG mounts. The original ZG mounts go for maybe three or two million gold on my server. But those, those mounts back then, and there's no other way to obtain them at all. And they haven't been able to be obtainable for 10 years. So what's going to end up happening is that you have a supply of these long boys that's not met with the demand that would warrant a gold cap price because many of the people that would have paid a gold cap price have already purchased the mount for 5 million gold. And also a lot of the people that still haven't done it won't have the money to do that in the first place by the very nature of the fact that they didn't have the 5 million to purchase it in BFA. Duh. As there's lots of players who have Duh. tons of gold saved up because they like to play the auction house for an expansion or two for fun, who might just quit the game for BFA and then decide to come back for Shadowlands and then think, hey, this mount has an auction house on it and is super useful. How about I use all of my money to buy it once I see it? And so for the average WoW player, farming out 5 million gold is quite the feat. Now there's many different ways to make 5 million gold, but if you were to do pure gold farms, it would take you a longer amount of time than trying to obtain pretty much all the other previous yep. spots on this list. Or not, this list isn't about mounts that take the longest to obtain, and are about ones that are the most annoying to obtain, as I think getting the pack mule might take longer than getting this one. Let's take running normal yeah. Skyreach as an example. Mm -hmm. This is one of the quickest dungeons you can run that gives a respectable yep. amount of gold, as you can vendor everything and expect to earn about 400 gold to run. And since that it's short good. and fast yeah. and has a teleport back to That's the entrance really after killing the final boss, you can run the entire place in about 5 mm -hmm. minutes. And there's an instance lockout of 10 runs per hour. So, if you run mm -hmm. normal Skyreach 10 times an hour, because Heroic locks you to 1 per day, that could net you about 4,000 gold an hour. Which would mean That's you'd have good. to run Skyreach for 1,250 hours in order to get enough gold to buy the Brutusaur mount. Or in terms of runs, you would have Jesus. to do normal sky reach 12,500 times. Gold farms now 
any time that you're farming for raw gold, it, it's a mistake. You should never farm for raw gold anymore. You only should farm for resources because there's so much raw gold in the economy through botting that the value of it is too low. Uh, raw gold farming is a complete waste of time. And this is a really good gold farm if yep. you're trying to farm for just pure gold, that is, i.e. not having to deal with the auction house or sell mm -hmm. things to other players. Yeah, and if one of dumb. the best pure repeatable gold farms takes you 12,500 runs in order to obtain one long boy. Yep. That should give you a good scope of just how annoying this mount is to farm. It's a long fucking Kinda. time, man. It can be fun if you find a whole bunch of creative methods to make gold. Uh, there's lots of them out there. I like wouldn't streaming. recommend running Skyreach 12,500 times, but maybe a handful of times on characters who've already exhausted their other gold making methods for the day. Yeah, just start streaming and it'll be fine. Like, I don't know what the problem is. It's easy. It could be a way to push your way towards the goal. Okay. So, even though this mount yep. can be bought from a vendor with no other special prerequisites other than having a crap ton of gold, it's only owned by 1.4% of the player base. That number probably won't go much higher once it's removed from the vendor in Shadowlands. Okay. But if you're Ooh. crazy enough to actually try to farm this mount, I'd highly suggest putting on a good podcast or audiobook so that you don't go crazy from the boredom. Yeah, that's very important. Which is important. actually a nice segue into the sponsor of this video, Raycon. Now, when it comes Wait, to earbuds, what? whenever I'm playing video games, I prefer to use what? wireless ones because it's real easy to accidentally pull the wires what? out with your chair or when you stand up to get something. But I also prioritize uh, comfort and Raycon definitely uh, delivers on that front. They have the nice kind of earbuds uh, that go into your ear with hey. a soft tip and block out noise on the outside. This is and an amount? Real easy with my Bluetooth connector. What the hell is this? As my old pair, which was a pleasant surprise. And the yeah, everyday okay. E25 model holds about a six hour okay. charge, with the earbuds being able to recharge in the case that holds them. Mm -hmm. The case and earbuds have a compact design, a variety of different colors to mm -hmm. choose from, and if you buy them from my link in the video description, you get 15% off your order. Okay. So that's buyraycon.com slash RoboRedX to get a pair for yourself. So you can listen to podcasts while you grind for raw gold for eight hours a day for the next six months. And at number three, we... I think that it's actually a good idea that a lot of these, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a lot of these YouTube guys are making these embedded videos for ads. We have the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent, who has a whopping 0.6% yep. collection rate. Yeah, it's Which super is rare. the lowest collection super rate of all rare. amounts on this list. $20. But again, this video isn't about the rarest mounts or the ones that take the longest to obtain. Yep. Just the ones that are the most annoying. Yes, The way they to are. get this mount is by simply killing the Shaw of Anger world boss in Mists of Pandaria. This fucking sucks. And the Shaw of Anger spawns on a pretty reasonable respawn timer. This and isn't that hard to find kill on each of your characters. As you can only kill and collect loot from him once per week per character. So if you have 50 characters that are all able to kill the Shaw of Anger, that's 50 attempts per week. But here's the thing with the Heavenly Onyx Clown Serpent. Yep. It has such a low chance to drop that people didn't even know it was obtainable at the launch of Mist of Pandaria. It's one in 2000. Like, this mount was a cock. Like, I, I know a few people. I think Nixie, one of my mods, got this mount. And a few other people as well got it. But for the most part, this shit is extremely fucking rare. Like, I haven't gotten a single world boss mount on my own. I've had to buy all of them from the black market. Like that's they just how thought they it are. was another mount to Blizzard added to the game files and were just never going to be made available. Yeah, to people the players, didn't even know it was real. There were a lot of Cloud Serpent models that weren't available at the start. Yep, but like the blue one. People have absolutely been farming this mount ever since Mr. Pandaria came out. And even then, it still has a less than 1% collection rate. Yeah, it's fucking insane. According to insane. some Wowhead comments, some players were able to get the mount after only 5,000 measly kills, with a couple of people reporting upwards of 8,000 or more kills. And since you see, that's the thing is like, it's a one in 1,000, one in 2,000 mount, but that doesn't mean that you're going to do it 2,000 times. And then you get the mount. Like you could do it like a, a hundred, like, uh, you know, fucking like a hundred times more than that. And you still wouldn't really have a, a higher chance to get the mount. Like it's so low that you could spend 10,000 kills on this boss and you wouldn't get it. It's such a huge waste of time. It's crazy. You can only kill it one time per week per mm -hmm. character. I can assume it took them years to get those kinds of numbers. And at number two, we have the Time Loss Proto Drake. I'm sure most people thought of this mount when they first clicked on the video, as this mount is kind what? of famous for being an annoying mount to farm. What? It's very aptly named. You will waste a lot of time trying to farm this mount's spawn locations. 
No, dude. No, dude. GG X mount. Yeah, that. What? Where is the Greek God X video? Here this we is go. His video. Eight years ago. Look at this. Greek gaming. October two thousand and eleven. Oh my God! I just got the time now. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh my god! I just got the time loss pro drink! Oh my That's god! What I, did. I call it time loss for a fucking reason! Because I spent yep. about a week! A week! Yeah! Jesus, dude, he's so happy! <laughs> yeah! Whoa! 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 <laughs> yes! Yes! I come back from eating lunch! Oh my god! Like, you know what? I'll have some lunch! I come back, all I can hear was this, right? This is what I could hear. He's right? gonna do this, this sound, is my add -on. isn't he? This is what it finds, right? I think I've seen this as a long time ago. Though. NPC, I could hear this. I was like, ah! 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 and then I just see the time loss pro Drake on that thing, and I shit myself. Ah! Ah! Okay, guys, I'm gonna make a uh, Minecraft video pretty soon. Love you. Bye. My favorite part about that is how he ends it with telling him he's gonna make a Minecraft video. Now, this mount is obtained in pretty much the exact same way as the phosphorescent mm -hmm. stone drake. Where yeah, this you is have easy to kill to farm. a rare mob that has a 100% chance to drop it. This is it. so easy to it farm. It has a 2 to 8 hour respawn timer and shares a spawn timer with another dragon Viragosa. called Dragosa, yeah. who spawns much more often. Now, the One time loss proto drake is so famous for being difficult to obtain it's that not. you can usually talk about how difficult a new mount added to the game is in comparison to getting the time loss proto drake it's way easier now because now you can farm it with a group like you have a five-man group and like one person like one person tags it and then everybody just goes over there and they all get them out it does have it's about a four percent collection rate which is a lot higher than some of the other mounts on this list although mm -hmm. i should probably mention that's still an incredibly low number for a mount that's been obtainable for over 10 years yep and i totally would have put this as the number one on this list it's basically what this list was all about. Mm -hmm. It's just the number one spot is definitely the most annoying mount to farm. And I'm sure most people won't disagree with me on it. And at number one, we have the Big Love Rocket, which is a mount that can be obtained from killing the holiday boss during the- I have every mount on this list, man. I have every mount on this list. That's nice. The love is in the air holiday event, man. which is the World of Warcraft equivalent to Valentine's Day. Yep. Now, this mount has about a 1% chance to drop from the holiday boss, mm -hmm. which is not half bad mm -hmm. when compared to the drop chances of things like the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent. But here's the thing with the big love rocket. You can only attempt the boss for two weeks a year. Once those two weeks are over, you don't have a way to try farming it again. And you just have there to- There are people that level up like literally dozens of characters in preparation for being able to do the big love rocket farm. And it's not 1%, it's like 0 0.3. Yeah, it's like fucking 1 in 2K or 1 in 1K. It's super fucking rare. I remember, I think like Annie got the mount like last year and she had been farming it for years. Like I, I know whenever I got mine, for example, like there there's mine. I, I have a clip of me getting mine. And basically what happened is this is in like 2013 and I went in there and I killed the boss the first time that year and I got the mount. That's how that's how it happened. It wasn't really a big deal. I just kind of got it out of the way. I didn't want to waste a whole lot of time on it. Let's see it. Okay. Look at this. Right here, watch. Visualize it. There it is. I just opened it up. That was the first fucking day. See, it was on like the 10th or whenever it was. That's whenever I got the mount. It was really nice. This is a great fucking mount. You got to grind mounts today? Yeah, no sound. Well, I don't know really what I said back then, so uh, I was being careful, okay? Uh, let me go back to the other video. Wait a year. When the mm -hmm. big love rocket was first added to the game, players in mass thought it was bugged. Yep. So Blizzard had to create a blue post to confirm that, no, it wasn't bugged. It just had a very low drop chance. Yeah, it's just Although, broken. I do have a friend who was able to get the big love rocket for the very first time she ever tried farming for it. Probably yeah. not that annoying to some people who are super lucky, mm -hmm. but for like everyone else, this is the pinnacle of annoying mount farms. Yeah, it one is. One that you can't even try for, for 99% of the year. Well, Be the other thing with this one is that 
you can't buy it. Like the, the world boss mount, for example, uh, you can buy the mount instead. Because at least with sure, the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent, you can try to obtain it all year round. So the big love rocket is just more a frustrating mm -hmm. grind because you can only grind it for such a short amount of time each year. In addition to the fact that it has an incredibly low drop chance. Yeah. So with all 50 characters on your realm, you can only attempt to farm this mount 700 times mm -hmm. per year, which sounds mm -hmm. like a lot of attempts. And it is, yeah. but I'm sure most people don't yeah. even know there is a 50 character cap on your account, let alone have enough max level characters to attempt that grind or high level characters. So you're probably looking at something around two to five high level characters. Thanks, Tyrion. Appreciate that, player, man. Which equates to about 28 to 70 tries per year. Jesus. Which isn't Thank really you, that much when it comes to farming a 1% drop chance mount. All right, and that's the end of the video. <laughs> okay. Are there any more annoying mounts to farm that I might have missed? If so, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments for potential another video on the same topic. This video was edited by the lovely Flying Buttress, so if you enjoyed it, you'd probably enjoy the videos on his channel as well, as they are also highly edited yeah, in this guy, video. Yeah, uh, this video is actually and really good. And also, did you know only 30.1% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel? Oh, ho, ho, that's clever. That is clever, boys. Let me go ahead. I'll, I'll link this one right here.